Good afternoon, guys. My name is Justin Bursich, and I'm Lucinity's Head of Data Science. At Lucinity, we're about bridging the gap between humans and AI to empower us to tackle money laundering and financial crime and enhance trust in the global financial system. Human AI runs through the core of our DNA at Lucinity. It's about synergistically bringing together the unique brilliance of human cognition and the technological prowess of artificial intelligence. Money laundering is becoming more dangerous. It's becoming more innovative and it's becoming more profitable. Fueled by heinous crimes such as human trafficking, corruption, bribery, and arms dealing, we as a global society need to come together and tackle this scourge on society. We need to be cognizant to the real human cost of money laundering. In fact, $2.7 trillion are laundered through the global financial system every year, with less than 1% of these criminal proceedings caught by the authorities. In fact, banks spend around $40 billion on AML, generally a bit outdated transaction monitoring systems, whereas criminals spend about $135 billion on R&D. The difference between the two is very clear. This is where we fit in. Lucinity provides human AI SaaS solutions to our clients to help them continuously improve their defense against money laundering and fraud. We connect our clients through an API interface and start to use behavioral AI algorithms to detect complex money laundering behavior. We send these cases through to our human AI powered case management system, which basically shows the investigators the case in general and they can use explainable AI and reinforcement learning to determine whether the case should be forwarded through to regulators. At Lucinity, we utilize the concepts and various manifestations of behavioral AI and deep learning. And we use this to find illicit criminal activity within our client's data, specifically deep, deep learning or deep neural nets, recurrent neural nets and graph neural nets are used to find temporal dependencies in the data hierarchical feature abstractions that allow us to find more complex networks of money laundering as opposed to just looking at single actors by themselves. We also utilize reinforcement learning in our front end in our UI, which I'll demo now briefly. The landing page provides an orderly overview and insight into the cases. Let's look at the case of David Butler. The AI generated case summary sets the scene for the case and displays all relevant high level information. The actor card provides a statistical and transactional overview of the actor being investigated. The observation card lays out the potential illicit behavior, provides behavior specific visualizations and transactions, and allows feedback to be injected back into the AI detection algorithms. Lucy sets things in context, utilizing reinforcement learning and explainable AI to optimize an investigator's workflow. The automatic case narration summarizes the case in a regulator relevant manner. We see Lucinity as a win-win for our clients and society. We're able to, to surface more complex money laundering or productive cases reduce the number of false positives and find the criminals higher up the pecking order in the hierarchy. We're also able to empower investigators with tools such as explainable AI to make them faster, more efficient and accurate in their processing of cases. At Lucinity, we encode all our intelligence within our knowledge graph, which basically helps us explain things clearly to investigators and our clients. We track the connection between regulations, behaviors, observations, features and models and allows our investigators to conduct the case with as much transparency as possible. We've developed and patented and patent pending a federated learning approach that allows us to holistically improve our customers' defense against money laundering without the sharing of any um, individual client data. We see ourselves as the enterprise ready startup born out of tier one banks in, in um, innovative fintechs and global regulators. We have a culture of action, raising our first seed funding early last year of $2 million, signed in several clients, including a large T1 US bank, and we're currently raising through Series A right now. We're also developing our self-service onboarding, which allows us to scale our solutions across customers and geographies, allowing us to basically get the customer to sign up, click one button, start their system, and start detecting money laundering immediately. At Lucinity, we're about meeting the goals of the SDG, specifically 516. We want to see an elimination of exploitation of women, the reduction in illicit financial flows, corruption and bribery, and the ending of the scourge of human trafficking. At Lucinity, we're about using human AI to make money good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justin. That was a great pitch and on time as well. Um, maybe I would uh, ask now our judges and mentors if uh, you have any questions, you can just enable the videos and Mike can go ahead. Yes, please, Enrique. Hi, Justin. Thanks for the pitch. Very interesting. Thank you.
how, how do you make sure that the uh, objectives that you have are clearly match in the, the last slide, the ones you're mentioning? Sorry, can you just repeat that question? So in the last slide, you mentioned uh, the, the objectives that you have to achieve the SDGs, right? Like my, my question is in regards to how do you measure those? How, how are you planning to, to actually hit on those goals? Great question. So whenever, look, our objective is to stop money laundering within our clients. As we grow our network, obviously we can stop money laundering in a larger, larger network than just one client. Especially with the use of federated learning, we can start to learn across the ecosystem. And this actually helps each bank or financial institution stop money laundering within their organization. So we see a world with this ecosystem growing and being a critical part of, of, of meeting these SDG goals, especially of stopping corruption and bribery. So it's not something that we're able to measure immediately. It's something we, we will measure over time. But in, in our case, it's about how many, how many criminals can we weed out of our clients? And I suppose that's the measurement that we use. Of course, criminals can move to other banks, but however many we can get out of our clients, that's the key measurement when it comes to the SDG goals. Yeah. Then I might just suggest to, to be more precise in the future on how you would like to do that. Sure. And, and what you can do right now in the sense of yeah, money laundry. And then in the future, we will be, or we would like to focus in X, Y, Z, and this is how. Maybe just as, as an observation that, that was on my mind. Thanks, Enrique. Will do. Thank you for the pitch, by the way. Very cool. Okay. Can I go with, no, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead. That's okay. All right, cool. Um, I just had a question about your, um, your tech stack. So talk to me a bit about your architecture and how you're making uh, your technical magic. I would, okay. Most of our models are based on TensorFlow and PyTorch models. Um, we use Spark in our background. Uh, of, of course, to, to, uh, given that we're a big data company. Uh, many of our clients have multiple millions of records a day. Um, so our tech stack is based on Spark, utilizing TensorFlow and PyTorch models to detect. Um, and our UI is, of course, JavaScript and, and uh, it's the SaaS platform. So our head of engineering would love to answer that question. Uh, but from, <laughs> <laughs> from a data science perspective, we are about utilizing the most innovative tools available. TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, are our tools of choice. Okay. Okay, got it. And and what what role does data protection, privacy, and security play within uh, within your company? And and how are you protecting sensitive data? Thank you for the question. At Lucinity, when we started, we had this issue that banks don't want to share data. So we actually developed uh, another patent. We have two patents currently pending. Our first patent that we developed was called was around pseudo -anonym, pseudo anonymization of data by using deep learning, specifically deep autoencoders. That, were, that was able to pseudo anonymize data into a non-human readable format, essentially numbers, but while it's still usable for data science algorithms. So essentially we take in the bank's data and we, we basically anonymize any PII information about those people, names, addresses, et cetera. And we can still pseudo anonymize to send that data through to our front end or, or basically our detection engine and use it in machine learning algorithms. So that's the first thing that we do whenever data enters our cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Good. One, one quick question on my end. Thank you very much for the, for the pitch that was really clear. Um, my understanding is your current clients are mainly bank and uh, there are issues linked to money laundering, I mean, tax evasion, but also corruption. Um, do, are you thinking of addressing different clients like other very large multinationals or international organizations or even governments in some countries? Yes, absolutely. So uh, currently our focus is on financial institutions, also payment uh, or acquirers as, as they're called, like payment processes. Yeah. Uh, we will eventually scale to more, I suppose, deeper financial institutions, including regulators and central banks. Um, but currently the focus is on banks. There are also, you know, a large, a significant proportion of money laundering occurs in certain organizations like the gambling industry. Um, mm -hmm. So we see the potential to scale as well to these industries. Uh, and Essentially, it's all, about the, it's all about building the behavior that we're trying to detect. So currently, we have about 80 behaviors that we tackle. And that might not just be in banks. That might be across multiple organizations. But as we build this behavioral suite, we'll be able to tackle money laundering in other organizations as well. That's definitely the objective. Okay. Thank you. That's very good. Thanks, Max. Hi, Justin. I also had a very short question. Thanks for the very clear presentation. 
Um, and it was also pertaining as to sort of um, the data on which you operate on, right? So you already talked about federation. So I, I, my guess would be the second pending patent is maybe related to that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just had a question re re regarding sort of uh, private bank clients and commercial bank clients, because I could imagine the complexity sort of uh, becomes higher when you're dealing with corporate structures and all the embeddings around that. How do you deal with that? Great, great question. So it does become more difficult, uh, I suppose, as the banks grow in size. How we deal with that, I suppose, one thing to remember is that our CEO, a head of engineer and myself have a background with these banks and regulators. Uh, so we, we have a good understanding of, of how the process of, of the sale uh, pitch and, and essentially the large, I suppose, um, a value proposition pitch goes. It, it, it does take time. Uh, so how we treat you know, larger commercial clients is about starting the conversation and you know, given our move towards self-service, you know, an API interface that allows them to connect their data as easy as possible, we actually see this as significantly easier uh, for our clients to connect to as opposed to competition. So I think the answer is that it's difficult, but we're trying to make it as easy as we can and definitely easier than the competition. Okay, so follow on question, very short sure. question, maybe to the data sources, right? So my understanding is you're working off transactional data that you obtain from the banks and on bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Do you combine this with other data sources? So. Absolutely. So we have our external enrichment sources. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I won't get too deep into what it is, um, but it, it does include public sources and, and some private sources. You know, essentially we need to, if we see someone transacting with a certain company, we need to determine who the be ultimate beneficial owner of that company is. We need to determine the network and linkages between it. So we need company data and, you know, from companies such as Dun & Bradstreet or the like that can actually connect us all the way through the chain of a transaction, you know, and understand exactly what's happening. So external data sources are, are critical for us. Yes. Thanks. Eva. I have a short question. Uh, thank you for the pitch. Amazing. Uh, my question is about the team. Like, uh, which kind of experience do you have? Uh, which kind of background do you have? Uh, and how big is the team? Because they saw um, so many pictures, okay? And so many logos, okay? That is fine. But it's kind of confusing. What does it mean, this logo? Uh, how people are full-time? How, pe how many people are uh, part-time? Like, is your team distributed in, in several countries, areas, time zone? How you, are you structured in this way? Thanks, thanks, Lorenzo. So we're distributing Reykjavik in New York at the moment with plans to grow. We currently have 15 team members and actually a new one did join this morning part-time. So we have 16, but that's 15 full-time and, and one part-time. Uh, we're breaking into, we, look, we are an engineering focused firm. So I would say you know, a significant portion of our firm is engineers and developers, um, data science as well. And then of course we have sales and marketing generally run by, by the CEO in the marketing department. So uh, we're 15, we're growing very quickly. We're finishing a series A round, which will allow us to scale very quickly. Um, so I'd say that's the current status of the team. It's generally one of the most brilliant teams I've ever worked with. Uh, and they're all committed to the course. They're committed to, to coming into work, helping find these, these patterns of money laundering and stopping these criminals um, and doing it in a way that we can scale across clients globally. That's the current team setup. 